I'm just proud of our team. I mean, we find different ways every single day to gut out victories. Um, they don't always go smoothly. They're not always pretty. But at the end of the day, we find ways to make plays. You know, I think Breon January was a prime example. She turns it over on one end, and then she gets a hell of a defensive stop on the other end. And, and that's just that's what we have to do. And, and, and you know, we, we shared the basketball extremely well. We had five players in double figures. We had tremendous balance. Um, and, and, and we did a really good job against a terrific rebounding team. And, and we just found a way to win. And I'm just really proud of our team. Steph, going into the last defensive possession, what did you tell them? Timeout, and I guess did well, it I can't pan tell you <laughs> Did it pan out? The, I mean, because Prince pretty much held on to the ball and breathed his guard. Well, you know, we knew Prince or Charles was going to get the ball, one of the two. Um, you know, Prince is one of the best playmakers in the league. Um, Tina Charles is could be the MVP of the league. You know, they, they, they both um, could have gotten the ball in that situation. We really just wanted to try to make whatever shot they got as difficult as possible. Um, we wanted to try to get the ball out of Prince's hands, but she did a good job of maintaining it, and Bree did a heck of a job in her one-on-one -on -one defense and forced a contested shot. I mean, she could have just as easily hit it because she's that good. Um, but ball bounced our way tonight. With about 42 seconds left, Bree also had that rebound off mm -hmm. of catcher's miss, I think it was. Uh, she just swooped in for mm -hmm. yep. I guess, I mean, that's critical at that, that, that point. Oh, absolutely. I mean, at all times, the 50-50 balls are critical, but especially when it's crunch time. When, you, when you're coming down the last minute of the game uh, and, and you miss a jump shot, to, to be able to get an extra possession, to put them in a situation where they had a little bit more pressure on them defensively, um, to be able to, to make that play was huge for us. And, you know, I thought New York did a heck of a job of making our lives miserable. Sure. I mean, they were denying everything. They were playing really good one-on-one -on -one defense. Their switches were active and aggressive. They, they, they dictated, you know, where we went on the offensive end. And, I mean, they're a heck of a defensive team. And I was just, you know, proud of us to be able to get shots when we did. So, did you sense any uh, signs of weariness in the second half? Because this is almost like the end of a four-game road trip. I mean, what, what you guys have gone through the last eight days is a little unusual, even in the WNBA, to play that many games so close together most on the road I think at the start of the third quarter a little bit um, you know our, our attention to detail wasn't quite there our energy level wasn't quite there on either end um, we started to get a little bit fatigued you know we knew this is a great team we knew they were going to make a run um, but we weren't really responding the way I wanted us to respond from an energy standpoint so you know I think that was the the only time but you know credit our bench too for I mean our bench has been awesome all year but came in and, and, and gave us a lift um, we're very vocal on the sidelines, and we were going through that little stretch, really pushing the players that were on the floor, challenging them to give a little bit more. Um, and, and, you know, we, we've got to be 12 strong. That's how, we, that's how we're going to win, and, and we've continued to show that we can do that. And, um, and I'm just, you know, again, really proud of our group. You kind of got like, 21 points out of the center position. I mean, Charles is an MVP candidate, and your center is essentially out of score. you got to do it by committee. I mean, shoot. You know, she's, Charles is a great player, and she's really improved um, not only in her, her face-up game, but finding her open teammates. I mean, she's a terrific post-passer. And so, for, you know, for us to, to be able to, to contain her, I mean, she had 18, so we, we did an all right job. But for our bigs to be able to collectively um, match her w was critical. Steph, what jumps out at you over the last two weeks? I mean, what, what, as a coach, what do, you, what do you think about this team over the last two weeks? I, I just done? think they have great toughness. You know, I, I think... It starts with Tamika. I mean, it, she, our team embodies her mentality. I mean, she has great toughness. She's a tremendous competitor. She plays her butt off all the time. She wills us to victories. And our team embodies her spirit. Uh, you know, she's not dependent on to do all of the things that Tamika Ketchings used to do, but everybody else is picking up for that. Everybody else is, is, is rising to her level in terms of the competitive spirit. We have more balance than we probably had on any team that Tamika's ever played on here. Um, and, and again, that's a credit to players like Marissa and Kaiser and Shanice and Bree and Everly. I mean, everybody that's stepping up and being able to give us production. But, um, but I, I think the one thing that, that really stands out to me is we have grown by leaps and bounds in terms of our mental toughness. What about this, this Eastern race, too? It almost looks like the uh, you know, Chicago and Indiana and New York Whoever finishes first may end up, you know, didn't they have to have the best record in the league just to finish first? And that's very unusual for the East. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, try, I don't look at it. You know, I don't look at the standings. I, I look at these stats just kind of based off where, where we are off tonight. Um, but I don't look at our rankings. You know, I, this, is, this is a growth year for me and for us. 
You know, you, you get focused on a lot of those things, and sometimes it's, it, it takes you off course a little bit. And for us, my most important uh, goal and the most important thing I look at is at the end of the day, did we get better? Whether win, lose, or draw, at the end of the day, did we get better? Did we shorten our lulls? Did we make plays necessary to put ourselves in a position to win? Because if we do that, wins and losses take care of themselves. And that's how we've approached it. That's how we'll continue to approach it. Um, whether we're first or fourth, you know, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. We just got to go out and play. Steph, how close is this team to becoming what you envisioned the ball club you wanted? Well, I think we're getting there. Um, you know, I, I, it's, I'm a perfectionist. So, you know, I certainly want it to look better. Um, I certainly want it to, to, to feel better at times. Um, but that's not reality. You know, I, I think um, what I'm most happy with is the way that we have players that can make plays versus run plays. Um, that's a growth area for our team because we have not always been like that. You know, we are making plays when they count on both ends of the floor. Um, we certainly have our structures. We certainly have our skeleton of what we want to do offensively and defensively. Um, but our players are feeling more confident and more comfortable in making plays. Um, you know, I'd like to say two weeks from now um, that, that, you know, we're, we're 15 to 20 percent better than where we are right now. I think that's our goal uh, heading, into the play, heading into the playoffs and putting ourselves in a position to be in the playoffs um, is to continue that growth process, continue to make it as, as fluid as possible for us on both ends.